Welcome, and thank you for tuning in to St. Peter's of the Valley Episcopal Church Morning Prayer right to this 19th Sunday after Pentecost, proper 23. I'm the Reverend Wendy Huber, the priest at St. Peter's of the Valley Episcopal Church in Basalt, Colorado, and I'm joined by my colleague and friend, the Reverend Richard Paxton, our deacon at St. Peter's of the Valley as well as our wonderful readers and prayer leaders this Sunday, the Thomas family, as well as Jan Johnson and her family, and my family who will be serving as readers this day. We are also blessed to have music provided by our music director, Rachel Rausch, as well as our soloist, Sherry Paxton. Today, we're celebrating morning prayer right too, and morning prayer can remind us especially when we've been asked to physically distance from one another, we are not alone. Our service begins on page 77 of the Book of Common Prayer, and please see t this Sunday's service bulletin that was sent by email. Feel free to respond and join us in our prayers, and let us, for just a few moments, be silent gather our family together, and as well as our four-legged friends we celebrated last Sunday with St. Francis Day. Enjoy our opening hymn. your light and your truth that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Continuing on page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Our service continues on page 80. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us join together in singing the Venite, found on page 82, with our beautiful soprano, Sherry Paxton.
Okay, uh, the psalm appointed for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is proper 23, beginning on page 612 in the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 23. Excuse me, let's read this together in unison. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. He makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. He revives my soul and guides me along right pathways for his name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You spread a table before me in the presence of those who trouble me. You have anointed my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely your goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And, and I, I will dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our service continues at the top of page 84. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first lessons from the Philippines. My brother and sisters whom I love for long... <laughs> hey, start over. <laughs> Okay, thank you. My brothers and sisters whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Udia and I urge Sintichi to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the... Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our service continues on page 87 with Canticle 11. Let us pray this together. Please join me. Arise, Arise shine, for, for your, your light, light has come, come and, and the, the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. you. For behold, darkness covers the land, Deep gloom enshrouds the peoples, but over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land. Ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day. By night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now and, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to the people in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, the wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, make quiet our hearts that we may listen to your still, small voice, so that in hearing your word, we may respond in fervent faith. <laughs> As Jesus led disciples of old, so lead us, your children, today. We ask it in his name. Amen. The parable in today's gospel lesson always makes me feel a little bit sad. I always think about how it feels to have a party and have no one attend. Think about it for a few minutes with me. We clean our house, we go to the store, or we order online these days. We buy delicious food and perhaps even some flowers, which we put lovingly into vases. We prepare nice food for our guests and we sit down exhausted, waiting for our invited guests to arrive. No one arrives, and the hot food begins to cool, and the cold food begins to get warm and begins to melt. The ice cubes in waiting begin to melt, and you remain sitting in your chair wondering just where everyone went. Why didn't the guests come to the party you invited everyone to attend? How do you feel? Sad, certainly. Hurt, certainly perhaps even a little bit angry, disappointed in that funny feeling in your stomach. Jesus, as we know, often used parables or stories to get his messages across. In the version of the invitation to the wedding feast found in today's gospel, according to Matthew, there is the knowledge of the historical fact of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Romans, which Matthew sees as the consequence of the rejection of Jesus. The good news is that others have been invited to this holy banquet. This party is the church. Jesus' parables and Jesus' ministry often have to do with this idea of invitation. They invite us to enter the realm where God and human beings are. By the grace of God, truly reconciled to one another. Where people are, by the grace of God, set free from sin and free to love. 
where people are, in the words of C.S. Lewis, surprised by joy. Joy in the presence of God and in the power of love. And what better story to communicate the grace and joy of God than a story about a wedding feast? What better story to communicate God's gracious invitation into God's realm than a story about people invited to a wedding feast? Sadly, today's church is showing us another party no one wants to attend. And even if you do come to the party, participating in church, whether in person or by YouTube, does not make us Christian any more than sitting in a chicken coop makes us chickens. And while that is true, let's look at another piece of country wisdom. Farmers know that salt is of vital importance to livestock. If cattle do not have salt, they'll seek what they need, even from dead stumps. Cattle in need will actually go up to those stumps and begin to suck out the salt. People today might remind us of stump-sucking cattle. We are in such need of spiritual nourishment that we seek it in dead and dying places, in strange spiritual dead ends, in fortune-telling and psychic phenomena and all manner of promises to find real meaning in life. We look for feel-good sermons that pat us on the back and keep us away from challenges and asking us to be better Christians. The spiritual desperation of so many people today is a call to us who are invited to God's great wedding celebration and banquet to share our invitation, to share our joy and our hope with those who seek truth and joy, those who seek life and light, those who seek Christ, whether they knew it or not. So who is invited to this grand party? We are, and so is everyone. We are all invited to turn to the true God who created us, who continues to save us from the darkness of blind alleys and dead ends, who rises from the darkness of the tomb to lead us to life eternal, beginning now. We're invited and we rejoice and we live in love and hope and joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're also asked to invite others to the party. When we go out and invite people to God's party, I think we need to let them know how wonderful it is to know Jesus and to belong to his family. Let the joy of belonging to Jesus shine through in all that you do. Oh, you'll probably still get some excuses, but it's worth putting up with them because you'll also get a few yeses. And you know, COVID-19 days may allow us to invite people to church and they never have to leave the safety of their own homes. All we have to do is tell them to tune in to St. Peter's of the Valley YouTube channel and they can get a little taste of our beautiful worship from the safety of their own homes. And if you're one of those who've been standing on the outside watching the party, know that you are invited in. Maybe the last part of the reading really scared you. The part about the man who is not wearing the wedding robe being thrown out of the party. But when you enter into the kingdom, you're supplied with the right thing to wear. It's not a fancy dress or clothes with a designer label. It's not something that's the latest fashion or fad. It's a garment that lasts forever. Paul tells us what that is. Put on Christ, he tells us. It is the love and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross that enables us to enter this most wonderful party. It's nothing that we ourselves have done to earn this privilege. It's already been done for us. 
That's great news. That's good news. We are asked to party on. And so let us pray for just a moment. Gracious God, thank you for inviting us to your party, to your kingdom. You welcome us in whoever we are and wherever we have come from. And you send us out to tell others the good news that they are invited to. May all that we say and all that we do bear witness to the goodness of your love. In Jesus Christ, <coughs> amen. Our service continues with our affirmation of faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed on page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray responsively the suffrages, suffrages A, found on page 97 of the Book of Common Prayer. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Let your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let us pray the colics, most of which are found on pages 98 and 99. The Collect for the Day. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Sundays. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of the, your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A prayer for rain. O oh God, Heavenly Father, who by thy Son, Jesus Christ, has promised to all those who seek thy kingdom and its righteousness, all things necessary to sustain their life. Send us, we entreat thee, in this time of need, such moderate rain and showers, that we may receive the fruits of the earth to our comfort and to thy honor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we may surely trusting in your defense may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And a prayer for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. And we pray for those on our prayer list, for these churches in the diocese. St. Gabriel, the Archangel Church in Cherry Hills Village, St. John Church in Newcastle, St. Mary Magdalene Church in Boulder, St. Patrick Church in Pagosa Springs, St. Stephen's Church in Aurora, Christ Cornucopia in Security. For those serving in harm's way, for Grant, Mike, Sean, Raleigh, and Frank. Those seeking strength, guidance, and healing, for Danny, for Moses and Heather, Frank, David, Dr. Lauren, Jeff, Bailey and her family, Bob, Helena, John Michael, Julie, Reverend Mark, Ron, the Faulkner family, Dick, Bill, Carolyn, Ashley, and those who have lost your, their jobs. For Donald, our president, and his family, as well as all who are suffering from COVID-19. For those who have died, for John, Bill, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Dr. Ethel Jones. And a prayer for a pandemic. May we who are merely inconvenienced remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home, remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools chose close, remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips, remember those who have no safe place to go. May we who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market, remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home, remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. This Sunday, we continue with our additional segment to our prayers, Birthday Blessings of COVID-19. We have birthday records for many of you and a few anniversary records, but if we're missing your birthday, please send us an email so that we can add that information to our records. This Sunday, we'll celebrate all the October birthdays this week. And if your name isn't listed, please let us know so we can add it to our records. We celebrate this week Wyatt, Oliver, Cindy, Corey, Charlotte, Rand. <laughs> blessing. Watch over thy children, O Lord, as their days increase. 
Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall and in their hearts. May thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our service continues on page 101 with our general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ. For the means of grace and for the hope of glory, and we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Continuing with our prayers. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. God the Father bless you. God the Son heal you. And God the Holy Spirit give you strength. May God, the holy and undivided Trinity, guard your body, save your soul, and bring you safely to God's heavenly country, where he lives and reigns forever and ever. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. A few announcements for the good of the order this day. If you need pastoral care or you just want to talk, please feel free to contact me and we can talk. We have been sending lots and lots of letters to one another, and we also have daily opportunities uh, by Zoom, Monday through Friday. Our next uh, abbreviated Eucharist is this Sunday, uh, the 11th of October, and after that, the next one will be October the 25th and every other Sunday, including the to-go or drive-through Eucharist from 11 to 11.30. Please remember, you do need to make reservations if you are going to attend the in-person service. We do ask uh, thanks for all of those who made this Sunday's service possible. In these days of Episcopal televangelists, the Reverend Richard Paxton, Rachel Roush, Jackie Amthor, our soloist, Sherry Paxton, uh, Robert Huber, our video directory, directory at director, and the Thomas family and Jan Johnson. Help us to keep our parish prayer list updated and send your prayer request to our church office. We are working on ways to gather in small, safe groups in the coming weeks. And remember, we remain the church, whether from homes or in our buildings. And my final word I want to leave with you this day is as we move into this election season, I want us to remember that as Christians and as members of St. Peter's of the Valley, it is important to remember that we have many, many perspectives in our own congregation and in our communities. And as Christians, we are going to show love to one another, and we are gonna continue this message through the election season and we are going to continue to pray for one another through this season. It is important that as Christians, we do vote. So I urge all of you to continue and be registered to vote and vote. 
But I also want you to remember that we are not all of one mind. That is the beauty of the Episcopal Church, is that we can share different perspectives and continue to sit down next to one another and love one another. Blessings this week. And next week, we will be uh, enjoying a sermon and service led by the Reverend Bill Shiflett, our part-time seasonal member who will be joining us. And after Bill uh, is preaching, I will get a little bit of a break. Uh, so I will see you in a couple of weeks. Blessings, dear ones. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice.